So this is my sawmill. It's a Nord lumber mate made in Canada and it's just a very simple band sawmill. Basically a 13 horsepower Honda engine spinning two wheels and then a band that spins around and cuts the logs. So just do a little maintenance before we get going. So I'll pull the covers off here. And these are the wheels that spin around for the band. So I'm going to put a bit of grease in there just to keep them well lubricated. So the band goes around the two pulleys, the two wheels, and is held in tension. This one has a big spring that tensions the band and keeps it tight to keep it cutting straight. So I tighten that one up, pushes the two wheels apart. There's a little gauge on the back here and I can tell when he's set to the right tension. Just like that. And he goes around like that. There's two guides down here that hold the band tight and level to the bed of the mill. The whole thing is mounted on a carriage with rollers and runs along the tracks just like a train. You've got a spring-loaded pulley system here that lifts it up and down and a gauge that tells me how high, how high the band is above the bed, how much wood will be left when it makes the cut. Water jug here runs water down, keeps the band cool and clean. Throttle here so I can push them along and away we go. So this is my log stash, my log pile here. We've got through just about all of them. The next victim is going to be this guy here. He's just over 20 feet long, so we're going to pull him out with the truck here and uh, chop about two feet off of him just so he fits on the mill. So I'm going to get the truck, tie a chain to it and pull him out, get my log arch, drive over the top and carry it over to the mill where we can roll it onto the mill. So this is my log arch and this one I'm going to drive over the log and feed this wire underneath it, hook it back on lift it up with this winch and that'll keep the log off the ground. The road's got a lot of little pebbles on it which get stuck into the bark of the tree and they're really hard on the band so I want to try and avoid that if I can. That's why I'm not just dragging it on the road over to the uh, to the mill there. This is our log and he's a little bit over 20 feet long. We want to get him on the mill, he needs to be about 18 and a half feet. You can see on the end here, there's a whole bunch of pitch sap coming out the end of the log and there's some damage up here, maybe when he was fold, so he's not the best on this end. So we'll get the chainsaw, cut this piece off and see if we've still got good wood here. You see we've still got a little bit of pitch in here and a little bit of ring shake in there or something. But it'll be good because we're cutting a, a timber out of this one, 8 by 8 So we'll get him on the mill and see how he looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these two timbers against the mill as a ramp. Pull this rope out here, roll the log onto the rope, take a cable from that come along, hook it to the rope and winch the log onto the mill. It's called power buckling apparently. There we go, on the mill. Nothing to it. Nothing to it, mate. Whew. So what we're going to do is level the log on the mill. 
and you can see the end of the log isn't quite round, the heart is off centre slightly. So I'm going to measure up from the bunk, find the centre of each end, and maybe lift the log up a little and put a wedge under so it's level, so the cut runs level to the heart of the tree. So the log is on the mill now and the centre of the log is running level with the bed. So the blade will cut down level with the uh, grain of the wood. Now we want to cut an 8 by 8 inch timber out the centre of this log but obviously it's a lot bigger than that so we're going to get some 1 inch boards from around the edge as we work it down. The centre of the log at the moment is 8 inches from the deck. So I'm going to set the gauge at 8 inches. From there, I want to go up 4 inches to 12 inches. That would be my cut to give me my 8x8, but I can see there's a lot of wood there. So I go up an inch and an eighth of an inch for the amount of wood taken out the curve of the saw blade till I get close to the top. So we go 13 and 8, 14 and a quarter. You can see the log's got a little bit of a dip in it, and if I run them at about 14 and a quarter, we should be pretty close to the top, and we'll get a 1 inch board or two 1 inch boards off of there. our first cut. With the bark on both sides, they call them flitches. And once we get this one down to a little bit smaller and out the way, I'll put this one back on the middle and stand them up, and I'll cut the two sides off to give us a board maybe eight inches down through the middle. <laughs> See the pitch coming through the wood here and here, a little bit here as well. All coming from that centre there where that big patch of, see the sap coming out of there. So we might lose the end of this log once we get them a little smaller. So now this log, we've taken them down to within four inches of the centre. I'm going to flip them over 180 degrees and do the same from the other side to leave us an eight inch flitch or cant right down the middle. So now we've got our log down to 8 inches, so I'm going to turn them 90 degrees, stand them upright, take a few boards off the top, flip them over, take a few boards off the other side to leave 8 inches this way as well. So now we've got our log down to an 8 inch by 12 inch timber with the heart of the tree in the centre. So what we'll do is take this one off of the mill, store them with the others, 
and then I'll show you what I've been doing with all the lumber I've been cutting here.